Welcome. Today I want to give a quick intro into um, Camona Cloud, which was recently released. I want to use that on an example, which I did quite a, quite a few times in the past, which is a very easy order fulfillment example, uh, where you say, hey, I have an order service that orchestrates a couple of others, like, for example, saying the first thing you have to do is retrieve payment, um, then you have to fetch the goods, um, and then you have to ship the goods, and you have a couple of other microservices which um, really do that. So that's what I I uh, want to show you um, briefly in this screencast. Um, of course, this is not the only architecture you could go for. So if you, for example, what a lot of customers um, do, use something like RabbitMQ or Kafka or whatever it is as a transport, it's totally valid um, to, to keep doing that, probably even also in the cloud or AWS Kinesis or whatever it is, um, in order to communicate between the microservices and then um, the architecture looks a bit different, that's true, um, but the overall thing is basically the same. Um, so it makes sense to look at that anyway. Um, so let's get going. Um, so what's that Camona Cloud thing anyway? So we recently announced that, you find it on the homepage. Um, you can request data access for that. Um, it's basically still a manual process, so we review um, all the requests and then um, we distribute the, the access credentials um, manually, to, so that might even take take a bit. So um, be patient, it's totally uh, worth it. As soon as you have your login, um, you can go to um, the Camuna Cloud Console, um, can log in, and what you can see is that you, um, for example, for the virtual engine for CVs, you can see um, your clusters, um, which you currently have. I will create a new cluster for this screencast, so let's uh, name that RMS. Um, I will do a development cluster for now, um, just to um, play around first. What you can see is that at the moment it's um, so-called unhealthy, which basically means it's still provisioning, right? Um, so that will take up to um, whatever, 30 seconds to a minute, that depends a bit. And um, But I already get, have a couple of um, information about my cluster, like the endpoint. Um, I can create client credentials in order to connect to it. So let's do that. So let's just say um, all clients. Um, I could have different credentials for the command line and for my whatever Java program, for different microservices, whatever I want to do there. Um, but for now, I don't care actually to make it quicker. So I just have my um, client credentials here, um, which is basically the client ID and the secret. And that's all I need to um, to talk to that um, CV instance in the cloud later on. So the basic idea is now we have CV somewhere in the cloud. You could use built-in workers, like for example, the HTTP worker to directly talk to REST services. But what I wanna do instead is I wanna um, basically use a Java application in that case to uh, connect to it and then deploy a workflow and um, start workers in order to do things, right? Um, so that's what I want to do. Um, what I said earlier on, I used an example I leveraged quite a bit in the in the recent past. So that's the so-called flowing retail example, where you do a very easy um, retail, um, um, yeah, uh, use case. And there's the so-called CV version of it, um, which is already there for for a bit, um, which shows you exactly what I had in the in, in the picture earlier on. And if you check out that code, what you will end up with is basically a couple of projects. I have them um, in Eclipse at the moment. And there, for example, there's the checkout uh, microservice that's responsible for providing an UI where you can basically place your order. And there I have a CV client configuration class, right? And that in the default, what you have with GitHub, it just creates a CV client which connects to a local broker, which you started either by um, running like the distribution yourself or using um, a Docker, for example. Um, we have a couple of Docker Compose files, for example. Um, but in order to go for the cli cloud, what you have to do is you have to basically um, use a different way of configuring the client to really authenticate to, towards the cloud. That's also um, part of the Get Started Guide where you can see that. And that's where we can um, basically use um, all this information we got here. So we got the cluster ID, uh, basically go back and set the cluster ID here, 
The base URL was fine. Um, the client ID is the one from here. And we get a client secret, which um, I will keep that here. Um, the author URL is fine. Um, so that's basically all I have to do. And now what I should be able to do, this is a Java Spring Boot application as soon as I start it up. Yes, I want to save that, of course. Um, it should actually connect to CV. Let's do a quick check if the cluster got healthy in the media. Well, yes, I um, talked for long enough, for long enough. So it's there. What we can also do now is um, we, for example, can look at operate, which is the operations tool around CV where we can see what's going on, where we see, okay, not much, <laughs> which makes a lot of sense because it's a totally fresh instance. Um, so that was this, so it's relatively easy. This one started and successfully connected to it. So that's fine. What does this gives me? Um, this actually um, starts a small application on localhost 8090. So let's go there, localhost 8090. So um, what I can do now is I can place orders, right? And this is a great UI, this is a UI even I can do. Um, so the only thing I can do is I can press that button. And what you can see is um, basically in this case, it doesn't work yet. Um, why? Um, because this one basically wants to um, kick off a new workflow in CV, which is not yet deployed, which is basically what it says here. So it doesn't find a workflow definition with order CV, right? Okay, that makes sense at that point because um, we, if we go back to the picture, um, here, here, um, we haven't yet deployed that workflow de definition on CV. The thing is you could now deploy that like manually or whatever, but in that environment where this is a, a microservice, a Spring Boot microservice on its own, I want this microservice to deploy it whenever it starts up, if it changed, right? Because then the ownership and the deployment is very much defined and it's very much in a way um, as you would have it at different ends anyway. So um, that's for me is very natural. It does mean that I have to start this first because before I can, can click on the button, um, which is something we can definitely um, discuss, but it's a simple example anyway. Uh, what I have to do is I have to copy these um, secrets here. Um, in a real application, you might read them from somewhere else, right? So you don't copy these Java classes to everywhere. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. But I think if you know how Spring Boot works, you're um, definitely able to do that. So I start that microservice up. It takes a bit because that has some own logic internally. It's connected to Camunda Cloud. And what this um, also does is I think here, um, as soon as it started up, it deploys the workflow um, to CV and the workflow is defined here. Right, so that's my real BPMN workflow. I can open that in the modeler. You see, hey, it retrieves the payment first, it fetches goods, and so on and so forth. Right, so it's a very simple workflow. Um, so as soon as we have that there, um, what I can do is I can go back to my operate and can refresh it. Um, and I see I have the order CV workflow now here. So it's deployed. That's good. I don't have instances yet, but um, this time is I, if I hit um, that button, what you can see, it immediately works. It doesn't produce that exception because it now can create that workflow instance. And if I go back here and refresh um, the view, I see that and there's one instance currently waiting for the retrieve payment. So it's here, it's waiting. Um, why it's not progressing? Because um, nobody is currently retrieving payments. So if I go back to the picture, retrieving payment is the payment microservice. So if I go back, um, there is a payment microservice in um, as a Java Spring Boot app. Again, I have to copy my um, configuration here. I actually, by it was my intention to make it very simple, not to have proper configuration and so on and so forth, because that makes it very easy to understand the code, which was my focus in that example. Um, so if I start the payment um, application, again, this one connects to the same cloud instance. Um, this should, a bit, should be a bit quicker um, because we don't have to start up a lot of things, right? So it connected to cloud. Uh, what I can see now, not here, but here, 
if I go to upgrade and if I refresh that, um, that one instance um, basically should um, move on. Please do not write in any of them. Um, right, it now did move on. Um, right, sorry, I was too quick um, in refreshing. And now it's here waiting for fetching the GIF. And if I now start the inventory microservice, it picks it up and moves on and so on and so forth. That's pretty normal BPMN and CB stuff. So that's not um, connected to to Camunda Cloud. But what's pretty awesome is that what you could see is that it's very, very easy to, um, to spin up um, a new cluster um, to get the credentials you need um, and to connect any, any client to it, which in my case were or was that um, Java application, that's very easy. But you can do the same trick um, with the CV command line and directly target it to the right um, cluster and get whatever you want from it. Um, so that was my very, very quick overview. I hope that you find that helpful. Thank you so much for listening. See you again soon. Bye-bye.